Restaurant Unstoppable. Inspire, empower, and transform the industry. With excitement, allow me to introduce to you, uh, I want to say back on the show, because you've heard his voice before. Uh, He's very active in the network and uh, just a huge part of the 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 chatter and the engagement that happens on a daily basis in restaurant unstoppable network in restaurant unstoppable network we're just lucky to have him founder and ceo of kaizen management bob sloop bob are you feeling unstoppable today every single time i wake up it's an unstoppable day yes man so today we're going to be going deep into this idea of when are you ready to have a fully integrated back office solution aka tools like restaurant 365 or compete and honestly speaking i i thought it took some time for the for a while i thought it would take some time to graduate to a solution like this um and bob started to push back or just organically in conversations uh, within the network, and he's kind of opening up my eyes to a different perspective. So today, we're going to answer that question. When are you ready to invest in a tool like Restaurant 365 or Compete? How do you avoid the app trap? Uh, when, like, What are the key performance indicators that tell you you're ready? Where do people go wrong when they invest in tools like this? And sometimes, I mean, you see it happen where people get these tools and it's overwhelming, and they just don't really execute well and what can we do to avoid that so that's kind of what i'm hoping to discuss in today's episode but before we get into it let's get that motivational inspirational ball rolling with a success quote or mantra bob what do you got for us oh my favorite knowledge is power and it's not how much money you make it's how much you let get away knowledge is power and it's not about how much money you make it's about how much money you get away spoken like a true accountant but dive into that well, I mean, you know, the, the industry historically suffers from what we affectionately describe as shrinkage. And, you know, if you're running an older model of a restaurant, it's all about the nickels and pennies and what have you. And identifying those shrinkage areas, are, it's not for the faint of heart. You need to have a system in place that can track things right down to the actual individual item. Awesome. Great way to get this thing started. And um, man, like we've had the conversation a bunch uh, and you've kind of, you, you've helped open my eyes around this idea of a restaurant can open and on day one be using tools like restaurant 365. I won't lie. Like my, my opinion, uh, my opinion on this until recent was start with a tool like QuickBooks, start small, scale into the bigger tools the more, the more robust tools the tools that are going to cost a little bit more and the why the reason why i say this is because i feel like um the the approach i like to opening a restaurant isn't going out and raising a bunch of money it's starting where you can starting small for a lot of people uh they just don't have the budget for a tool like this however that's not how everybody starts a restaurant there are a lot of people who do have careers in the industry and they are investable you know like people will invest in them they can raise a million dollars before the day they open and for those people it might make sense to start with a more robust platform like restaurant 365 so that's kind of where i'm at right now but the question is when do you know you're ready like so bob that's what let's just start there like if if you're consulting somebody what what would you want to see in their business to to help you understand whether or not they're ready for a tool like Restaurant 365. Okay. Well, there, there, there's multiple approaches to this. You know, you take a look at what the concept is. You take a look at what they believe their forecasted revenue is going to be. Uh, you actually, um, the first thing out of my mind, I mean, I have about 24 questions I ask a, a client when I first meet them or just anybody that's in the industry. And It gives me an immediate picture of, are they looking to be a standalone independent? Are they looking to scale? Are they looking to, uh, you know, franchise? You know, I mean, the the visions going forward, you know, differ from founder to founder. But, you know, in retrospect, it doesn't matter whether you want to stay a small little independent 
even doing under a million dollars, uh, or you want to be, you know, a, a thousand unit franchise. The, the need for a system that provides you granular inventory control, which represents, you know, a third or 30% of your operating budget is, is for me, it's mandatory because you could run your operations out of QuickBooks and all of a sudden you're looking at a 35 or 40% food cost, you know, cost of goods. And there, with that system application, there's no way to go granular to find out where the shrinkage is actually occurring. You have to sort of like emotionally guess, or, you know, if you're a culinary guy, you're going to sit there and hover over your prep guy or hover over the waste you know, the, the garbage bins or, you know, the old school way of doing stuff. And not that that is not a good way to do stuff. It, it, I still suggest that you do that. Is it but the best you get, use of your time? I'm sorry? Is it the best use of your time? No, it's not. And, and that's, you know, the, the big pushback here. And, 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 I, and I, I'll ask the question to you in the group. You know, if your belief is that I'm a, organically grown, you know, restaurant venue. And I think that I just want to start with QuickBooks. I can't, I, I can't make the investment into a platform like that. Okay. You do realize that when you do get to the point or in your mind of, you know, advancing to a, to a, a more robust system that you're gonna, you've already, you've already made the decision to pay for something twice. So what's really cost effective there? Yeah. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is it doesn't matter if you're a small independent. Those integrated back office systems give you an instant ROI view on your cost of goods. That itself may represent five, conservatively, five points to your bottom line. So if it's five points to your bottom line and you're a small operator doing, let's say a million dollars, okay, hell, that's, yeah, that's 50 grand, right? That's a salary. That's, you know, yeah. That's yeah. And, and, and it doesn't cost that much for a small independent with a small menu and, you know, under, under 500 master file inventory items to get a good ROI from that. So that's how I, that's how I dictate whether it's, if you're ready for it or not. Yeah. So, I mean, but let, let's throw some numbers to that. Like I think before in conversations, you mentioned a million dollars of ROI or revenue a year. If you're doing a million yeah. a year, then you, you are in the position to invest in a tool like restaurant 365. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the rumor or the feeling for operators is, Oh, compete or restaurant 365. That's for when you've got two, three, four, five places. You know, I'm a small little independent. I got one location. You know, I have five people that work here. I don't need a system like that. Not true. The amount of time that you're going to save by utilizing an, an integrated system versus, you know, that second generation configuration, you'll probably put in a lot more admin time using the old system versus an integrated system. So what about the argument of, okay, Bob, well, you know, I've been running restaurants for 20 years now, 30 years now, and <laughs> I, yeah, I never had these tools and technologies then. Uh, why do I need them now? I was able to run a restaurant not using these, these systems then. What's, why is this necessary now? Well, let's, let's, let's multiple answer that. Uh, my big question would be, okay, you, I've been doing this for 20 years. Okay, no problem. Uh, what's your profit margin? My profit margin uh, percentage? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm hitting about 14% profit margin. Good. Would you like to make 20? I mean, that's not possible, Bob. Is that possible? Yes. Oh, can I show you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, sure. And, and I've gone through that. I've gone through that discussion for 20 years. And, you know, you become an apostle when you start making 24. Uh, you're not in a low margin business. You're in a lack of a control business. You're, you're in a lack of knowledge business. You're, you're in a, 
you know, drama, you know, as a, as a, as a standard business and, and dealing with the public is hard enough. And I get that, but you'd be surprised that the shrinkage identification, putting that kind of number to your bottom line. Well, why exactly is a million a year, the magic number for you? What is it at that? What it's, happens? At that no, see, you want to put a, you want to put a metric on it. Well, just like a key performance instead in the of the, instead of the metric. Great. Right. No, instead of the metric, Ask yourself the question, is it necessary for me to be able to identify my shrinkage, yes or no? Yes. Well, forget about compete, forget about, you know, an integrated back office. How would you do that? I would, I'd count. I would, I would pay attention. I would put systems in place to manage that. Okay. No so after you did that, you had a 40% cost of goods. Yes. What's going on? Where, where, where's the shrinkage? I don't know. That's the, that's, that's my point. You're going to okay. guess. Okay. Yeah. Because you could have a list. Okay. Is it the, is it the item cost? Is it the prep? Is it in the portioning? Is it in bad inventory counts? Okay. Is it in theft? Is it in waste? I hear you. So, okay. um, so we talked about the a key performance indicator being total gross revenue, a million dollars. Um, what are some other indicators that? And you said what you like to look for is what do you want to become? Where are you going? Do you want to scale? Do you want to yeah. be a multi unit operator? Like, so I'm I'm assuming that. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm assuming that. Um. If the goal is to scale, if you are building something that you want to have legs to bring to multiple units, then you're leaning towards you should start with a tool like this from day one because you don't want to be changing things in mid stride. Uh, is that the argument? Well, it's it's part of it. I mean, if you if you built and and you had this conversation the other day when you were talking to the individuals about training. Uh, you know, software is, a, is an interesting animal. It's, it's, it's logically based, it's structured, it, it has a format and you could plug it into your application, okay? If you go and put in all these manual processes and you're using QuickBooks and you're using, you know, some secret free cheap, you know, inventory recipe master or, or all of that and, then you want to graduate to an integrated back office because that other system is taking way too much of your time. Uh, you're going to find out that the structures that are in those, you know, integrated systems may not match the manual thing that you put together. So you're going to have to relearn all of that. That's, that's a big, that's big change. Okay. You want to avoid, you know, monumental, you know, knock the dominoes down kind of change because, you know, it, it you're going to get huge pushback from the people. Yeah. Huge. They, so, won't, they won't want to use the system. So back to when, when do you know you're ready? Basically, the, ask yourself, what do I want to become? Am I, do I just want to be a, a, a counter restaurant uh, that serves, you know, my, I, I don't know where I'm going. Do I want to stay small? And do I just want to keep a simple operation? Do I just want right. to? run this well, whole thing. Yeah. Am, am I happy making 500,000 a year and, right. you know, just the, the living the a modest beauty, lifestyle? Then, yeah, the, the beauty of it, 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 the answer to that is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because cho choosing an integrated platform makes you, the, the chances of you being more profitable at whatever level you want to be at, okay, is going to be greater. Yeah. So one of the things that is making me see the light to this idea of integrating or, or starting with an integrated system like this from day one is that if you if you do want to scale, if you want to even get to like five units, yeah. uh, say this, that, throwing that random number out there, the only way you're going to do it, in my opinion, is by putting layers between you and the work, outsourcing, whether it's a system or, or hiring somebody who's better at something, a technician, whether that's a chef or whatever you want to surround yourself with an army of people who are better at things than you are. And that includes one, one of the first things that you should outsource. In my opinion, is an accountant. You should not as a restaurateur, in my opinion, 
be playing with the numbers uh, if that's not your thing. And, and it's a, such an important thing that you should bring an expert on. And the future of that world of accountants, restaurant accountants specifically, they're going to be using tools like this. Uh, this is going to be the standard, in my opinion. Tools like Restaurant 365 and Compete. Uh, there's other tools out there. I'm curious, what are, I keep on saying Restaurant 365 and Compete for the record, because in my experience, that's the most recommended on the show. But what are some other tools that can be considered full integrated back office solutions? You, you have concepts like Miris. You have concepts like uh, Restaurant Pro. You have you know, the, well, what's the other one? C2. It, uh, there, there are a couple out there, but, you know, Compete and 365 are the, the big boys. The ones that are, are most commonly recommended on the show. And that's why I keep on using those yeah. as an example. Well, I mean, it, 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 I've been into implementing those platforms for 24 years and they've grown to become extremely robust. They're, they're, all destined to eventually be in an, an enterprise solution, but yeah, let me uh, let me get and, back and, to my and train benefit, of thought. Yeah, I'm sorry. The benefit was you want to you, because you're a busy restaurant tour, you don't want to spend your time maintaining multiple platforms. That's no. why I don't like. That's why I don't like the app trap. It yeah. becomes more work than you really want to really want to get into. It. So back to my, the, my train of thought before I lose it, because I'm not that impressive. So I don't get these thoughts out while they're there, then I will lose them. I promise you. So <laughs> this idea that like, what's it going to cost you to operate Restaurant 365 for two years? And it takes about two years. If you're a new restaurant, at least two years to really get to the point, in my opinion, unless you got something really special out of the gates to be operating out of the black. You need at least a year or two years of operating capital. And that should be money that you're, you're raising when you're, when you're going out there and getting money to open your restaurant, what's an extra $10,000 on a million dollars. If you're raising or even $500,000, what's an extra $10,000 to have operating capital in the bank to start the way you to, to be a big business, to act like a big business, like a big boy business or a big girl business, with big boy and big girl pants from day one, $10,000. When I look at it that way, I'm like, yeah, it's a no brainer. Get, the growing I'll, I'll, I'll give you a different way to look at it okay when you invest in those platforms okay if i told you that you could have my cfo advisory service a full implementation of uh, one of those integrated platforms okay and all your bookkeeping and accounting done for you okay for a year and i'm only going to charge you 15 dollars an hour Okay. You kind of just made where, where we left off was I was kind of proving the point that if you're going to be in raising capital to open a restaurant, what's another $10,000. We also address the fact that you should be building an army of people around you. Uh, in my experience, the first two, the first two hires are outsource uh, people you should go to when you're, when you're, when you're in the restaurant business, one is an accountant, two is isn't a, a lawyer. Like these people should be factored into your, your, your costs from day one. You should have an accountant in my opinion, from day one. Um, and Bob just pointed out that it would cost about 15 bucks an hour to have somebody like him on staff, right? So when you look at it like that, and then all of a sudden it, it starts to make sense that maybe I should be investing in a tool like this. But here's the thing. I think the next question I had for you to really dive deep into is where do people go wrong when they do invest in a tool like Re Restaurant 365? When, when you see people struggling with these tools in your experience, Bob, like what's, what's going on there? Oh, this, that, this is one of my favorite subjects of all time. Uh, first of all, as you say, you know, you, you should hire yourself the experts that you're lacking in on a personal basis. And in order to implement an integrated platform like this, you need to have a little bit of IT background, actually a lot of bit of IT background, uh, you need to be, you know, a finance guy somewhere, somehow, and you need to be a culinary guy. I mean, most people don't have those three characteristic attribute skills. They just don't. And the ones that are culinary guys, they're terrible at finance. And the finance guys don't know how to saute a damn thing. So, I mean, knowing that from the get-go, okay, and the big fear here is that there's some monumental investment up front to make okay 
and then we can go into a discussion of the 70% of the people that don't even have a business or operational plan. Okay. That, that just scares the hell out of me because that's why the immediate reaction is I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I'm, I'm charging you the same amount of money that you would pay a line cook. What's the problem? I don't, I don't understand. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. You could invest $15 or $18 an hour for a line cook who may or may not be there in six months. When I'm done, you've got your back office for the next five years, minimum. I, I look at it as, and it has, if it has the ability to give you back a minimum of, you know, five to 8% on your bottom line, because you, you can identify where the shrinkage is, isn't it worth it? I mean, the, the obvious answer feels like, yes. You know, when you look at it that way, for sure. But you said back to this. And, idea and the, pro yeah, and the problems, the problems that they run into is historically restaurateurs think that they have to do everything themselves. They want to be in control. Okay. They don't want to pay somebody to do something that they can do themselves. Well, the mindset is it's, it's all about like you, the way you started this episode, it's about money out, not money in. And the first right. thing to think That's about right. is operational expense. And they think that people are the most expensive expense. I mean, it's, it, you're technically not, I mean, it's weird because you are a labor expense, but you're not because you're, you're being contracted out. So you, well, you I mean, the con that's just the savings right there. You're saving on the taxes and everything else, but your line cook is not going to generate 8% to the bottom line. Exactly. Um, you, you did mention, however, that you need culinary experience to use a tool like restaurant 365, um, or in, in, we'll, we'll start to call it a fully integrated back office solution. Right. Why do you need culinary experience? Uh, the basis of a manufacturing inventory control platform is in for restaurants are recipe masters. And so what is it that I you have to know how to do conversions and you have to know, you know, the, the, the structure is associated with the product. Got it. And um, more importantly, the, 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 the big questions that people buy these software packages or sell sheets that, you know, put in the product and put in your current, you know, unit cost and they calculate what the theoretical is and that's all good, but they never talk about a little concept called yield. It's important to discuss yield. Why? Because it's, it, it, it'll change your cost of goods like that. And if you're not calculating yield, you, your, your theoreticals are not right. So, Yield is what hap what you get after waste, basically. So say you get a box of cabbage and you cut out the core, you got to account for the core that you're throwing away and that's yield. And that is what you're making money on. Right. Well, the, the, the example that I used to give when I was a vendor is you could buy a case of dole lettuce, okay? And the, and the weight on, on a box of dole, dole lettuce used to be 28 pounds. Or you could buy a box, you know, and you could pay, let's say, fifteen dollars for the case. Or you could buy a box of foxy lettuce, and it's only ten dollars a case. But the the yield the yield weight is only twenty pounds. Which is the better deal? The first deal. The more expensive dull lettuce, yeah. because you're going to get more yield out of the product that you're buying. Those things are very culinary. You need to be able to measure all of that. And, and yes, the, 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 the accounting part of that or the finance part of that is, you know, you're supposed to work in conjunction with the, with the chefs and say, okay, just put in the recipe and we'll do the rest for you. And we'll make sure that your theoretical costs are good. Because remember, you needed those three skill set guys to, to be doing all this. And more importantly, I don't believe that restaurateurs, I mean, these software companies, they sell you the software and for, you know, for eight or $9,000, they'll put you through a training program and teach you how to implement it. Well, I don't think too many restaurateurs have implemented fully integrated back offices. 
they, they're not familiar with any of this stuff. And they believe that a little training is going to give them, you know, the skill sets to pull this off. And that's where they run into really big problems because they put together the, the application by themselves or on their own. Oh, I'll get my chef and I'll get my bookkeeper and I'll do the front, you know, the beverage and we'll get this done. Well, first of all, it'll take you twice as long to do because it's a learning process. And second of all, if you do it wrong, you're, it's garbage in, garbage out. So there is some truth to this idea that Restaurant 365 might be out of reach for some people. One, wrong. Wrong. And, and the reason why that's wrong okay. is because you're associating it with, I have to be able to do it myself. I'm saying hire somebody for, like me for $15 an hour and you'll get it done correctly. Period. That's not out of your control. That's that doesn't you can afford fifteen dollar an hour person for a year. Yeah. To do to do this. That's true. I, I'll I'll admit that, and I do think that where people go wrong is just they they're incompetent in knowing what it costs to run a restaurant in the first place. So right. they start, and they don't they underestimate the the operational expenses, and they can't get the money in fast enough because it's going or, the, or they don't have a model at all. Which is why I think it's important to to start like to really to really do a pro forma figure out exactly what it's going to cost me to run a restaurant for a year and then throw another 50 percent on top of that because you know you're going to miss something and and if unless you have i mean it's just one of the biggest lessons i learned like it's going to cost money you need to you need to put money away the the, the process of, of opening a restaurant doesn't start when you open the doors it starts years before putting the money away, preparing, doing your research and having, like Bob said, a plan. And oh, that's, a, that's plan. a four letter word. So why is, oh. why is the plan so important to when it comes to get into the details of, of why you need a plan to execute or to, to use a tool like restaurant 365 or compete? Yeah, it's, it's not out of, it, it's, it's not out of any conjunction to, of, of reality to invest in this because it's a five year investment okay and it's going to pay for itself in year one yeah um, you know, did you miss my question i think you might have missed did you miss my question about why you need to plan to get into the details why like what, what the why, plan why, why you need an operation yeah, it's obvious it's an obvious question but like you be, it, yeah you it's don't a, know you, bob <laughs> that people open restaurants without a business plan or they, yeah, so, they have a plan and they don't yes. stick to it yeah 70 percent of them don't do it uh, and, and that's a problem because uh, they're just, you know, they're, they're running their business on emotion. They, they have no systems. They have no policies. They have no controls. They, they haven't thought out their business in advance. It's so much easier to change it on paper than it is <laughs> to sit there and try to change the physicalities of it or, the, or the processes of a restaurant. Now, you're right. It, it takes years prior to opening the door and a lot of, a lot of research, uh, you know, even if you've got experience uh, to, to do this and, you know, spend your time in the beginning, make, make an effort. It's, it's, it's the same kind of mindset that says, I'm going to invest in a more robust application because in five years, I'm going to, I'm going to depend on it. Okay. And, I don't have to build it again. I don't have to pay for something else on top of what I've already invested. So, you know, it's, it's, you got to have a plan, man. work your plan and plan your work. So, so back to this idea, I really want to round off this question. What goes wrong when most people who do invest in restaurant 365 in your experience, what is the problem? Is it because they try to do it themselves and they just underestimate the robustity? The, yeah, the, that's, the that's no, that's number one. Robustness. You, they're gonna they're gonna need to do data collection. They're gonna need to have recipe masters with yields. Uh, they may have to change uh, operational procedures and policies to more correlate with the structure of the integrated platform. Uh, they may have to reprogram their POS, especially in beverage, because when you in, when you put together an inventory control system, and it doesn't matter which one you pick. OK, it has to be directly connected to, you know, an ingredient depletion unit of measure. OK, 
I, I know for years of legacy systems that, you know, I order an absolute martini and the, and, the, and the bartender hits a button that says absolute up. There's no such thing as up. Go in the back and count how many up we got. It, it, you, can't, you can't do that. Okay, so you have to change possibly your operational procedures. You may have to reprogram your POS, you know, and, and more importantly, in front of all of this, when, when I talk to a prospective client, first of all, the one thing that you got to get is the owner to buy in to what this workload is going to be and explain in detail what the ROI is and why it's worth it. Because without the owner buy-in, at the end of the story, you're going to get people that just refuse to use it. You know, if I send you a template that says, fill out this template so that we can do your recipe masters, and you send me back a Word document with no units of measure, you know, salt to taste, uh, it's a bunch of time. Uh, you know, I, I, you see it all the time because when they write the recipes, they actually write the recipes to, to know how to make the dish, okay? Making the dish with a recipe and costing a dish with a recipe is two different things, okay? So if you don't know that, you know, or, or you don't even have your recipe master done, that's a daunting task for them. Yeah, so <clears throat> I, I wrote down, explain in detail where the ROI is to your owner. You said that's a key important. I, I, wanna, I wanna shelf that. Maybe we'll, we'll wrap up what that explanation looks like. If you're listening to this, if you're not the owner, Maybe you're the general manager or an operator or, or, or you need to try to sell somebody or maybe it's a partner you need to convince that might be pushing back. Um, I want to I spell that out and I think we should probably end with that explanation. But back to this idea. So in, in the event that I'm listening to this and I saw the title, I'm like, ooh, I just invested in a restaurant 365. I don't have an accountant or somebody who's doing this for me. I'm trying to do it myself. And maybe I'm struggling. Maybe I really just, and I know that your argument is going to be that when you invest in me, then I'll, I'll help you re, re, recoup that, that struggle and you'll, we'll, we'll get margins back and we'll, we'll, we'll like you, you get what, you know, you get what you put into it. You, you, you'll get a return when you, when you start working with somebody to do this for you. But what if we just want to try to see if we can't figure it out on our own? Where do we go? Where do we go to find information about how to use tools like this well? Does Restaurant 365 provide a good archive of information on how to execute? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they do. They have, they have video tutorials on all of all the screen applications. They give, you know, a regular class. Uh, you could sign up for their program. Uh, it's Is that expensive. free? Does that come with the, 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 the purchase of the, the software? If you, you have to, they'll, they'll try to sell it to you. Yeah. Wait, it's, it's expensive. They charge, I believe, $175 an hour. An hour? Wait. So if I were to sign up for Restaurant 365, I have this, this software. And now I need to learn how to use it. I have to charge, I get charge $100 an hour to be 175 to 175 an hour to be taught. There's no... There's no like just video learning tutorial platform anywhere. There's nobody out yeah, there. No, there it's is. The they, 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 they are, they're on YouTube. They're, they're on, they have video things on their website going over that. If you want to do it, you know, the restaurant way, which is I pay nothing. Um, yeah, no, they, they provide that if you don't want to spend $175 an hour with them. So yeah, you could, you could be self-taught. You could learn this, okay? We don't charge $175 an hour, by the way. Uh, we're substantially less money. Uh, the concept of self-teaching yourself, you know, if you're going to do it before you open, that's great. Th there's less danger there. Yeah. But if you, you make this, if you went into your business and you started with QuickBooks, and, you know, you basically give a shoebox to some bookkeeper and you, you don't think that the financial part of your business is worth, you know, your time because you're too busy over here. Uh, you're going to find out really quickly 
that you need to learn those skill sets anyway. All right, we're back. Okay. <laughs> Bird got the first word in. Um, so we're <laughs> back. And really what I want to do, and what were we just where we just left off is this idea. If, if you have committed, if you've made the financial commitment to Restaurant 365, you haven't done the due diligence of educating yourself on these verticals of IT, accounting, and culinary, um, but you're in it. What's your advice to this person other than hire me? Say they, they, they really just don't want to hire you. Where are we going? Where are we learning? What things can we do in our business today to turn it around? What, what, what would your advice be to me? All right. Your, your, your free path is go on 365's website, sit there and go through the two tutorial videos that they have. Okay. Ask them for a client that is near you. And, and do a telephone call or Zoom with another operator on how he's handling the platform. And they're probably gonna say, I have an account. <laughs> they may or may they, they yeah. may not. It depends. It, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use, you know, the, the platforms that we're talking about are really robust. There, there are different levels, different, hierarchies of detail that are involved there, okay? You don't need to do them all. You can grow into that, okay? The basics you can do, I, when I have a new client and I know that they're totally unknowledgeable about any of this, I tell them they only have to do three things and most of it they're doing, gonna do anyway. One of them is do a purchase order. Another one is to do a receiving, okay? Receive the goods into the house. And the third one is to do a physical inventory. You don't need to be an IT scientist, you know, with a degree to do those three things. Okay. But yes, that would be dependent upon, you know, a, a, a company like mine to, to help you through the process. But you could do that yourself just based on a conversation with another, another user. And when you do that, you can get the initial building blocks, the good foundations, the, you know, the connective to, knowing what your theoreticals, because that's the, that's a big one. Okay. You know, you, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars or hire somebody to learn how to do a recipe card. Your chef probably knows how to do it anyway. And if you don't have a chef and you're doing it yourself, there are plenty of software applications and tutorials on the web, on YouTube that can walk you through the process. So that's actually one thing that I, I'm curious about. Um, I've noticed that there isn't really a, a resource out there like like maybe there are some courses on udemy i haven't checked recently but are you familiar with with tools like lynda.com and udemy and all these like e-learning platforms yeah. master classes yeah in my opinion i haven't been able to find any resources out there that are that for the restaurant industry because all of a sudden in the past it feels like five or ten years there's more and more technology software being created for the restaurant industry, but there aren't a lot of resources, e-learning platforms to teach restaurant owners how to use these tools. Is that a bad statement? Uh, it's a semi-true statement. Uh, you know, you got David Scott Peters, you know, you've got uh, the restaurant boss, uh, you've got software companies. Some of them have, you know, very, very interesting, well put together, you know, by the marketing teams, you know, uh, two tutorials that, that you could just go on their websites and, and learn the stuff. Uh, but, you know, grassroots, you know, it's historic. It's like you get a piece of software. You know, I know when I was a, a young guy and I was learning how to do, you know, Excel sheets. And then the next thing I know in three months, they updated it and it changed. I had to sit there and just poke through the software and I, I learned it organically. Yeah. I will say this. I will say this for anyone who's listening. I have the ability to host that type of material, that type of content. If you have the knowledge and the skill set and you want to share it and maybe even earn a little extra revenue on your knowledge and create a course with me, like reach out to me because I'm, I'm looking to create. I would love to create content like this for the industry. And maybe, Bob, that's you and I collaborating on some stuff. Yeah, we, we, we can easily talk about that. I had, a, I had one of my associates tell me a long time ago, 
that I should, you know, for all the training that we, we did, we used to do training Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for an hour every, you know, every week. And we, we, we recorded those things, but they're so individually focused on the client and, you know, their information is on the screen. I, I couldn't use it, you know, to publish. Uh, but something like that would be invaluable in conjunction with, you know, the software companies doing it. Because what will happen is the software companies will see, you know, what you're doing and, and, and they'll, they'll try to replicate it, which is good for the, for the, for the user. You know, so, the, go ahead. Uh, no, my, I, I agree with your, your, your thinking. I think that providing a resource for the guy that wants to learn on his own, you know, you know I, I tell guys that hire us that by the time you're done with us, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be an implementer, but yeah. you know, that still costs money, but yeah. uh, I could, I could turn that into videos that you could just make available. Well, uh, one thought I had, and you, yeah. you mentioned something. Um, one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of this is because it's hard to put this material out without releasing a lot of sensitive information about a restaurant or a business. Cause it's all personal. If you don't yeah. give a shit about that, if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't care if the world knows my numbers, and like you, you recognize that at the end of the day, like it's about execution and not all that other little stuff. Like, and, and you want some coaching. Yeah. I think it would be cool to have Bob that we literally like do a screen share and you coach people through some of the stuff and we, yeah. we share that information. Just throwing well, that I out could, there. I, I could save you time. I mean, you could Greek the, uh, you can Greek the, the user's name and, you know, who they are uh, and just get into the content. Uh, but, 365 compete and a couple of other platforms they give us our kaizen has its own you know platform with those that i can build and do and play i use it to train people got it okay here, here. So, okay so yeah i could i could use that interesting uh, let's definitely explore this and if you guys are interested in that type of content uh don't be afraid to reach out to me eric at restaurantstoppable.com let us know um the one thing i want to cover before we wrap up is best practices when it comes to, um, say we already have a consultant, right? And that consultant is uh, just becoming familiar with Restaurant 360, or that, not consultant, but that accountant is just becoming familiar with uh, Restaurant 365 or whatever. I guess where I'm going with this, what is what are the best practices for accountant, restaurant owner, I guess, engagement, um, like, what does that look like as far as if I'm a restaurant owner and I'm paying somebody to do this, like, what should I be expecting? What, what's the, the structure of that relationship look like? Okay. First of all, the, the, the application of doing, you know, accounting for a restaurant is a little different than almost any other enterprise. Uh, it has unique things that it is structured to do that, most accountants can learn, you know, in a couple of days, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the inventory section of, of what they need to know is very similar to, you know, a manufacturing. So they're going to have that knowledge already, you know. Uh, they need to be well versed in the industry. Uh, and they have to have just a general enough knowledge in accounting for restaurants. And, you know, that's the kind of individual that is easy to teach uh, because they have to learn different platforms anyway. But uh, I know when I was working strictly as an accountant, I had to learn like 30 of them. It was like daunting, uh, but it, it's valuable because you start to understand the relationships of everything. But uh, the, the, the restaurant tour should look for a person that has restaurant knowledge that has a firm grasp on you know the platform that we're talking about uh the user should give them direct access so that they can save on you know audit fees and that kind of stuff um it, it it's it's not going to be that difficult from the financial end the real difficulty is going to be inside the restaurant that's where the that's where the problems really start to occur because so when you connect an inventory system to your POS, 
you know, front of the house will willy nilly create a button that they didn't think of for whatever reason. Okay. And, and I've told this to people many times, whatever you do on the POS side, there's a cor corresponding connective on, on the integrated back office. They don't tell anybody that they created a button. Oh, we did a special menu. You need to tell us, you need to, you need to do the connectives for that. Otherwise your higher level inventory, you know, theoreticals aren't going to be right. Okay. So there's an extra step that they have to understand. It's not just about, Oh, I'm going to just make a button. Uh, they have to get, you know, re-educated as to how their system works. Okay. Or one of my other favorites is the chef has got, you know, some other piece of software that he's got on his laptop and he's sitting there doing recipes in that instead of doing it on the platform. Well, that, that, that's non-productive because now you got to take that and put it in there anyway. So yeah, again, you're going to double do entry twice. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, your costing may not be right. So just to you summarize up to this point, I mean, you know, whatever. The original question was, what do you yeah. like? What does that relationship look like? What are some of the things we should be looking for? Do they have, do they have the experience? Do they have the right knowledge? Are they cut off? Are, are they an accountant for this industry Two, The other thing you should expect when you get into this relationship are they giving you a crash course in the do's and don'ts and the things you need to know to execute this, this platform? Well, the, the less obvious things, but what, as far as like, once you start working with somebody to, to run restaurant 365 or a tool like restaurant 365, what standard, as far as the expectation hours worked or meetings held, or like, what should we be expecting for our, our investment? What's, what's, what does that picture of that relationship look like? Yeah. I mean, to implement one of these integrated back offices, depending upon, you know, and it's, it's key that, that everybody understands this. It, it is the complexity of your menu. It's the number of, in, you know, master raw items that you have in conjunction with that. It's, do they have the data? You know, do they have recipe masters? You know, do they have the vendor listings? Do they have all the emails? Do they have all this data that they're going to need to put into the system? And more importantly, do they have the time to do this? Okay. Uh, and I told you in the beginning, it's probably going to cost you double because it's going to take you twice as long because you're learning as you go. If your accountant knows the platform, uh, I, I could tell you historically that I had a client call his accountant, his, you know, outside accountant, and he wanted him to teach him how to use, it was Miris, but still, same thing. Uh, and he, he, the, the accountant just said, call up the software company, you know? So, you know, you're going to get directed to, you know, an educational process that may have to cost you money. And they don't want to do that. They want an organic, you know, you know, free to play kind of thing that allows them to get educated. Got it. Okay. That's why I like your platform, Eric, because you can get an education on this platform just by asking a couple of questions. Well, that's the whole idea is this idea that we collectively all have most of the answers. And it's just a matter of being willing to share that. And if coming together, oh. we can round each other off, you know, and we can be oh. much stronger. I mean, you know, you could you could teach somebody how to how to implement one of those things. Uh, I know it takes me about maybe three months to teach a person to be an implementer here. It would okay. take you six months to teach me, man. I'd be horrible at it. Well, I, 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 believe that, <laughs> I believe that you would pick it up really quickly. Well, thank you very much. Um, so the one thing I want to make sure we, we uh, wrap up before we open it up for Q&A, we have a couple of folks that joined us. Um, <clears throat> I would like to explain uh, again the – oh, man, I wrote it down. Explain in detail where the ROI is. It's something that you said that you're going to, it's a key thing you're going to have to do if you want to get ownership on board with this or your partner on board. So if we are making an argument right now to our business partner, to the owner, that we need a more robust tech stack and, and succinctly give us that pitch. What, what is the argument? In, uh, in one you, minute, you would, elevator pitch, less than a minute. Can you do elevator it? Elevator pitch. Go uh, for it. Uh, it, it's the same thing I told you before. What's your revenue? What's your profit margin? 
what's your shrinkage? Now, if they can't answer, like especially the shrinkage, the next question is, don't you think you should know what that number is? Would you like to? Because it may represent between five and 8% to your bottom line. So and in, order, in order to do that, you need a more robust system than like a QuickBooks. You need a full blown inventory control system. Got it. Bob, I've really liked this conversation. Uh, you're, you're always providing value uh, whenever you show up to all the conversations. And it was great just to focus solely on what you have to offer today. Uh, your specialty specifically. And of course, we have people joining us just in time for the Q&A. We'll see if she, what she has to offer of anything. Uh, Matthew, go for it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you had mentioned earlier that um, there was kind of the million dollar sales break point um, for using Restaurant 365. Um, does that hold true? You know, because I'm looking to do a second location and it's going to have, you know, liquor and a, a few other things that I'm, you know, haven't been used to in the past. Um, and projected sales are just under a million. Uh, would you still recommend Restaurant 365 for that? Absolutely. Especially since you're going to be doing beverage. Okay, perfect. And and I would I would even recommend some other software that would make your inventory process for beverage, like a no brainer. Do it. Okay. Yeah. Right what what sure. recommendations? Uh, it would be a little software application called Nectar. Nectar. It uses an ultrasound pour spout that measures your liquor consumption in real time. Okay. And, and it's connected to a purchasing module that that creates the PO to replace your bottles. Oh, cool. And you can do an entire probably full blown, you know, 40 foot bar inventory in about 10 minutes. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, Scott, we, I saw that you joined as well. If you have any questions, now's the time to get them out. Jill, feel free. I, I know you, you're just joining Jill. So if you have no idea what the conversation was around, if you don't have any questions. I understand that as well. Uh, or Matthew, feel free to have a follow-up question. Scott, go for it. So what does uh, Restaurant 365 not do? All right. One of the things that are going on right now in the world of that company, they just purchased Compete, which was their major competitor. And they're busy putting together both of those applications by exam, actually the, all three of the applications they have, uh, and creating, let's call it 365 2.0. Uh, because if you examine the software, and we've done this for them and for other companies, uh, they're really good at certain things, but Compete is better than they are in certain things, for instance. If today you wanted to, you know, plug this stuff in and you've got a commissary application, I would tell you to use Compete because Compete's uh, commissary module is a little better than 365, okay? If you were concerned about the time turnaround to implement the platform, 365 is easier to do than Compete. Compete doesn't have an upload feature for your master files, 365 does. All right, these are the idiosyncrasies of the software. And, you know, we've been doing those for, you know, a decade. So we kind of know where the applications are lacking on one side and positive on the other. Uh, but for a user, for an end user, all you care about is that it's gonna control my inventory. It's gonna measure my shrinkage. It's gonna help me put more numbers to the bottom line. OK, and I can tell you now, I've taken both of those specific applications when I talk to a new client and I show them both, at, you know, one at a time. Say so here, here. And sometimes people just prefer, let's call it the GUI preference, you know, the, the, the look of the platform, you know, versus the other one. Uh, they feel more comfortable with the way it's structured. You know, if you're more comfortable with pivot tables and, and that kind of stuff, 
then you're going to gravitate to R365. If you want a more simplistic legacy kind of GUI, you're going to like compete, you know? Uh, or you could be, you know, old school and say, I don't like any of this stuff because it's just too complicated for me. I don't want to waste, I don't want to sit in front of a desk all day. Well, you can build the application irregardless of which one it is so that you don't have to do that. You can, you can automate a lot of stuff uh, or you know, just hire yourself a really good kitchen manager. That's usually the, the recommendation I give. Uh, and if you don't have one, I can supply one for you. But uh, it depends on how, and I say this to clients, it depends on how anal you want to be. Yeah. So you did just, you mentioned, we, we mentioned it in the past too, that uh, Restaurant 365 has acquired Pete as of what, like a, almost a year now, right? They've been over a year, I want to say. Uh, they, they, they purchased Compete in June. Uh, 2021? 21, yeah. Okay, so almost a year. <clears throat> um, and they, they are planning on rolling out uh, Restaurant 365 2.0, or what, what are you calling it? I call it 2.0. 2.0. I don't know what they're going to call it, but they're, there, they're putting the best attributes from both. And rolling out one feature. And, and one putting product. it together. You know, where, where they're deficient and Compete is good, they're going to, you know, update their software. So when that happens, is Compete going to go away as a connection? Yeah, I believe that it eventually will go away. And will, is there a timeline on this? Uh, is there any clue as to when that this yes, new version is going to You got to ask them. Because I could tell you from a software application standpoint, <laughs> this takes a long time to do. Are you a betting man? No. Okay. I only bet on two sort of things. <laughs> if you were a betting man, when would you say that this 2.0 would be rolled oh, out? It's two, it's two years away. At least two years away? That's too bad. Yeah. yeah. Now, they, they may roll out. They, they may take a different approach. And, and I think this is what they may be doing. They, they've already contacted all the compete users. And said, you want to switch? You want to switch? You want to switch? People that are used to using that platform aren't going to, in my opinion, aren't going to make the switch so quickly. Okay? Yeah. So they'll start to update, you know, and they do this. on. They're good at this. They update that software a lot. Okay? Uh, as those application deficiencies get plugged in, okay, uh, they're going to take away the argument of why you should switch. Hell, for all I know, they may change the entire view of the GUI on 365. I don't know. Okay. But, you know, I know they took a huge survey on this of all the users and their tech guys are, you know, sitting there with a big list of what they want to happen. That's why I told you it's going to take a while to, to, to do this. Can be trying to do it when they bought C2 it and it didn't work out so well. Well, you mentioned C2 it earlier, and I thought that that C2 it would have been encompassed or is now a part of the Compete Restaurant 365 solution. It is, and and the reason why Compete bought C2 it is because they didn't want to reinvent the wheel on reporting. C2 it had a really, I mean, they had like 200 standardized reports. Yeah. Okay. So instead of having to build all of that from scratch and compete because Compete uses a, a, an Excel add-in uh, to do their dashboards and stuff. And they were more interested in completing the HTML5, you know, getting Compete to be on an on a, on a iPad or, 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 or your phone. And that was more important to them than, you know, doing the integration things for Seek to it. And they kept the platforms available on the same screen you just you know pull the drop down and say, oh, you're a radar customer, you know, or your advantage customer, and you could go on the same you know screen and, and go to whatever application you wanted. Uh, I don't know how our friends at 365 are going to do it, but I, I got the impression that they're going to want to have one, you know, structural platform that they work on, and slowly, you know, transition away from C to it and and compete. Got it. Bob, I've loved today's conversation. Uh, you're a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this stuff, and we're lucky to have you in the network. Honestly, you're constantly adding value. Uh, if, if we found value in today's episode, or maybe we're looking to open and we uh, are looking to Restaurant 365 for our accounting inventory solution, 
Uh, and we have been convinced that we can't do it alone or we shouldn't try to do it alone. Uh, and we are in need of an accountant. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, you can contact me by email. Um, it's uh, rsloop at kaizen-management.com. Or you can you can go on this platform network and Unstoppable and just send me a message. Yeah, that's uh, Restaurants Unstoppable Network dot com uh if if, uh, if you want to try it out before just diving in there shoot me an email eric at restaurantstoppable.com i'll get you a 30-day trial yeah un unlike the software companies i'll give you you know I'll, I'll set up a zoom for you and i'll walk the i'll walk you through the entire platform button by button if you want to and show you where the where the advantages are you know what why don't we schedule that right now um not right now but like after this call let's schedule that live okay. in the network Okay. Um, maybe like a couple of weeks after this goes live, maybe sometime mid April, uh, let's do a demo uh, of exactly that. And um, that. let's make that happen. I think that'd be great content. Yeah. You can, you can, you can see that it's not as daunting as you think. Yeah. Once you, once you understand the theory of how the software works, this becomes cake. It's easy. It's very, very easy. Okay. Because the user isn't going to get into the IT structure and, you know, the securities and all, you know, which screens people can see and that kind of stuff. That's for your administrator, for the owner. And you only set those up once and that's it. Uh, one of the things restaurant guys like to do is set it and forget it, you know. Uh, you can't do that with, you know, your, your, your other uh, a participant in the, in the talk today. You know, he's going to open up, you know, location number two and location number two has, you know, liquor now, you know, his first location probably didn't have it. Uh, that's a whole big thing there because now you're talking about, you may have an extra three or 400, you know, SKUs. Okay. You have to build that inventory. You have to build the recipe masters for that. You know, you have to, you know, program your POS. It, it, there's a lot to it. Yes. It's work. Yeah. Bob, hit us with your email one more time. R-S-L-O-O-P at kaizen-management.com. Episode 875. Head over to restaurantstoppable.com slash 875. Uh, we will have a summary of today's discussion over there as well as links to, to connect with Bob. Um, and I just can't say thank you enough for joining us today and for being such a valuable member of the network, my man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. There is no questioning. You are unstoppable. <laughs> we'll cut it there. Awesome. Thank you so much, dude.